This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to David Julius and Ardem Pataposhin for their discovery of receptors of temperature and touch. Let's see what were the experiments done by these two scientists that led to this novel discoveries. First, let's start with David Julius. David Julius worked on receptors for temperature. Uh, he worked on a compound, a chemical compound called a capsaicin. This is a compound, a chemical compound that is extracted from chili pepper. When we eat chili pepper, we get that burning sensation, right? This burning sensation is because of the presence of this capsaicin. David Julius worked on this compound. He isolated neurons, the sensory neurons, which could sense this capsaicin or the neurons which were triggered by this capsaicin. And from these neurons, he isolated DNA. And these DNA fragments uh, were converted into a library, a collection of DNA fragments. Obviously, in these DNA fragments, we have genes, the genes that code for different proteins. And proteins are the actual mediators here. The actual sensory responses are given by these proteins. He wanted to know what are these proteins. So, he isolated or he studied individual genes from these DNA fragments. He had not nearly millions of DNA fragments and from these DNA fragments he individually studied genes one by one. How did he do his study? How did he study? He took a cell line, a family of cells which were normally not sensitive to capsaicin, which means even in the presence of capsaicin they did not show any response. And then he started adding these genes one by one and checked in the presence of which gene that particular cell line showed sensation towards capsaicin or that particular cell was sensitized by capsaicin. This was a basic experiment. Out of millions of DNA fragments, he had to choose genes. He had to incorporate these genes into cell lines and then wait for the response shown by those cell lines in the presence of capsaicin and the cells which get sensitive to capsaicin, he basically wanted to check which gene makes those cell lines sensitive to capsaicin. Finally, he identified one particular gene that coded for a protein which he named as TRPV1. This protein is a ion channel protein. Ion channel in the sense the proteins which are present on the surface of membranes which allow the movement of materials. The name says ion channel. So it's a channel protein for the transfer of ions like sodium, potassium, chloride or any other ions. Okay. So this TRPV1 was an ion channel protein and the neurons that were sensitized in the presence of capsaicin contained these genes which encoded for a protein that is TRPV1 which is an ion channel protein. When you eat a chili pepper, you get that burning sensation and then your brain will perceive it as pain. Right? So this burning sensation was perceived because of this channel proteins which are present on these neurons. So these channel proteins could perceive the difference in temperature. So the temperature which was not normal activated this protein. For example, the temperature which is well above 40 degrees Celsius maybe activated this TRPV1 and that in turn sent the signal to brain and uh, made the brain to give a response. So this was a simple experiment, a uh, simple but laborious experiment done by David Julius which helped us to understand the underlying mechanism behind this uh, stimuli. Next let's see what was the experiment done by Adam Pataposhin. He wanted to understand uh, how mechanical stimuli will be converted into senses of touch and pressure. He took cell lines which were mechanosenses which produced electricity when we triggered by mechanical pressure. So these cells are mechanosensors. In the sense when uh, you poke them with a micro pipette tip, they would generate electricity and this electricity could be detected. Like we all know, any uh, function of cell is monitored or it is governed by the DNA present in it. So Adam wanted to see what are the genes that are responsible uh, to uh, generate this electricity which are responsible to show this stimuli. What he did, he studied the DNA of these mechanosensor cells 
and one by one he started inactivating these genes and he observed in which inactivated gene resulted in the uh, no generation of electricity so adam started inactivating these genes one by one and he observed that when he inactivated one particular gene the cell stopped showing mechanosensitivity even when he uh, poked it with the micropipette it, it did not produce or generate any electricity so that gene was responsible for this entire action uh, that time they were calling it as candidate 72 they didn't exactly know the name of this gene adam isolated the single gene whose inactivation made the cell mechano insensitive and this gene encoded for a protein which helped in perceiving the signal signal of mechanical pressure and this protein they named it as piezo 1 piezo in greek it means pressure so later on studies revealed that there are many other classes of piezo and one important among them is piezo 2 both piezo 1 and piezo 2 are equally important in this mechano sensitivity piezo 1 and 2 are very much important in maintaining blood pressure and in contraction of urinary bladder and during respiration during breathing process in the contraction and relaxation of muscles around the lungs so these are other useful activities performed by these pressure receptors apart from that piezo 2 is very important in maintaining proprioception it's our body's ability to sense movement action and location these two discoveries the discovery of receptors for temperature and pressure has helped us to understand how these senses like heat cold temperature or mechanical pressure generates nerve impulse in our body and helps us to interact with the world around us if you like these kind of videos please share and subscribe to our channel thank you